uh, let us start with uh, this uh, webinar. Uh, we, I'm, I'm Praveen, and uh, let's start with the agenda that uh, what, what we are going to see in this next 30 to 40 minutes. SOLIDWORKS Plastics Overview with how injection simulations are made easy and the plastic is designed with detailed outputs, what all the outputs we can get. And then and a case, small, simple case study of uh, experimental validation and with a customer reference. So let's get started. But overview, plastics are everywhere. You, you take from uh, the carry bag, what we use, to simple when we start the day with a toothbrush to uh, you know, tube of the face to everything, you know, the coffee mugs, very well. Uh, when you come to office, car, everywhere, even in the even your, uh, your partner, uh, mobile phone, and computers, everywhere, the plastics are there. And plastics manufacturing is not just straight as, uh, as any other uh, metals. So it needs a different kind of, kind of tooling and the different materials. There are thousands of materials available with thousands of combinations and alloys of plastics, so which uh, makes this industry you know, vast. And uh, if, if we have to see as a background at, uh, what, what are the most common injection molding defects. These are the injection molding defects. Injection molding happens when uh, once a, a tool is made with a core and cavity with all the other injection system, injection systems in place. Uh, injection molding happens, and injection in the injection molding we we come across a lot of defects. Uh, it, it it takes trial and error sometimes to you know um, rectify these and uh, avoid these uh, these type of molding defects and get to the um, production. So some of our here are short shot, which part is not built completely. Then uh, how to predict this? This used to be test shot. Uh, once the mold is done or a uh, uh, prototype is done, uh, then the injection is uh, uh, injection molding molding mold is uh, loaded on the injection molding machine and uh, we take a shot. Then we will see how and where we are getting the defects, bezeling effects like burnt marks due to the with the overheating of material or whatever, and water weld lines, which is a cosmetic and structural defect. Unbalanced family molds where I have different uh, uh, dif different geometry of parts inside a single mold where uh, mm, one would fill faster, one would not fill, and uh, you know, the time difference in filling the cavities. And the seat marks, which affects the surface of the uh, part with the uh, marks and the ejector marks, which is again a cosmetic defect. Non-uniform shrinkage. Plastic materials come with a peculiar quality of uh, uh, shrinkage, where uh, uh, this has to be taken care early in the stage of mold design itself. How to compensate that uh, uniform uh, shrinkage? So that is again a structural defect. Long cooling cycle, which is a process problem, and warpage is you now warping of the plastic material once it is molded and taken out of the mold. Um, there would be a there will be expansion or contraction of material, which is called as warpage, which is a, again a structural defect. How to predict these defects? Most of them are test shots where we have to make a prototype and then go to the machine and test it. Is the is the method which was used to be earlier, but with the technology today, we can have these type of defects detected in the early stage of mold design, so that my our time to market is much much faster. And the resources utilized and productivity is increased. So the resources utilized is very less because of what whatever we are doing, uh, we are detecting the defects in the virtual environment itself, and we are compensating those, and we are correcting those. And number of prototypes is reduced. If at all I have to do without any technology, with the with the thumb rules, I may have to take probably five shots uh, as a, a prototype to arrive to a production a productionable part. But with the technology, we can reduce those prototypes into one or two. So these are the most uh, common injection molding defects. Now, to, having said that, technology is helping us to you know overcome these type of challenges in this industry. We would like to introduce SolidWorks Plastics. SolidWorks, everyone knows what SolidWorks is and SolidWorks uh, how strong it is, where it is, and how user friendly it is. Everything, but. SolidWorks Plastics is a different portfolio which works inside the solid itself, uh, inside the SolidWorks itself as a modular add-on, which helps me in analyzing the plastics manufacturing in, in terms of uh, part, 
how whether the part is manufacturable and in terms of mold, whether all the mold parameters are uh, taken care of. It also helps us to predict and avoid manufacturing defects at the earlier stages, like uh, eliminating costly mold rework, improving part quality, and so on. So, if I have to give you a value proposition, 80% uh, more than 80% of consumer plastics are injection molded. There are some other molding methods which should be used very rarely these days. And injection molding is a complex mix of time, temperature, pressure, material, tooling variables, and post production. Everything. And then the cost ranges like this. So, what value proposition SolidWorks can offer is using SolidWorks plastic simulation to avoid just one round of mold reward can result in a positive return of investments. That means if I am uh, taking five uh, test shots, five uh, prototypes to prove the mold is producible, then uh, using uh, SolidWorks plastics technology, we can have it in. Uh, in one or two uh, rounds of uh, this thing, you know, test, and it, hence the time is saved and time is always uh, equal to money. So, let us go on with uh, what all available in SolidWorks Plastics. SolidWorks Plastics starts with uh, uh, it can be done on a uh, CAD model, any type of CAD model, it is whether it's inputted geometry or additive geometry. It starts with meshing where uh, I, I discrete the entire model into small triangular uh, particles or uh, hexahedral particles. But also I have two other types for solid mesh where we can have tetrahedral components, elements, and as well as hybrid elements with triangular prism and tetrahedral. So once the meshing is done, we can go ahead with the process. So how injection simulations are made easy? Intuitive workflow and design advice, which is available in SolidWorks Plastics, help me in guided analysis, intelligent uh, defaults, and automated process. Ensure my complete process setup. What what happens is before going into the shop floor, I can be made assured that this mold is going to work probably above ninety percent correctly. Where uh, I can also optimize the plastics pro part production by optimizing the part wall thickness predicting the gate locations it's always a challenge for any mold designer to you know get the accuracy of the gate locations and the type of gates and the runner system size and layout to ensure whether mold works right the first time or which needs to eliminate the need of rework so what what images you are seeing is the the um, animations you are seeing is the flow uh, of uh, plastics material inside plastics uh, solidworks plastics which helps me analyzing the parts uh, and molds very quickly and very accurately so that it gives me the positive results to uh, get our designs right. So how optimization of molds can be done? It can be it can uh, be whether single cavity, multi cavity or family mold layout, trying out different uh, types of locations for screws, runners and gates according to the you know, it's a mix and match of thumb rules and uh, experience and the intelligence of the mold designer as well as the behavior of the material and uh, geometry of the material where to give the uh, runners and gates because uh, most of the times aesthetical importance to be given to the parts which is exposed to the outside. If it is an inner part, most of the mold designers would, uh, would doesn't take much importance to the aesthetics of the part, but the quality of the part remains same for either aesthetic or non-aesthetic. So also evaluating advanced approaches such as inserts, insert and valve gates, two shots, gas assisted molding. These are the technologies which helps me in making the advanced injection molds where my, my productivity and, uh, and the demands of the market to be uh, covered. Like inserts, if you, if you have to go with the electrical part like connectors and all, there has to be some inserts, uh, which is a combination of metal and plastic where metal has to be inserted inside the mold with different kinds of uh, temperature settings for that particular material to get it uh, or sustain that kind of uh, mold temperature. And also uh, above and uh, uh, above, uh, above that, the plastics material has to be injected to get the plastics part, the connector or whatsoever uh, to be usable. And uh, it also allows mold makers to create best tooling for the job uh, faster and more affordably. Which, uh, when I when it comes to affordability, when I when I reduce the number of prototypes, it definitely increases my uh, margins in the mold. 
So injection simulation made easy. We are going to see that in the uh, in the tool itself, how fast and how accurate or how easy it is to um, simulate the injection mold designs inside SOLIDWORKS plastics. Plastics design with detailed output. What are the outputs I can get? You know, when when I do uh, before before going to the next slide, let us go and have a look at how plastics are. Uh, you know. Uh, how easy it is to work on plastics, SOLIDWORKS plastics. In the SOLIDWORKS plastics, I hope uh, you all see, can, uh, can see my screen. Uh, here in the SOLIDWORKS, there is something called as configurations, which can be utilized for injection molding as well with uh, having one single window for entire uh, uh, iterations of plastics mold design, where it, it can be, you know, default uh, one part or with thick or thin or number of gauge or family mold types or different materials, everything can be done in one single environment that we create in the configurations. If you look at the configurations window in my uh, SOLIDWORKS window, you can you can just click on the particular uh, configuration where you can see that particular configuration visible to me where I can start with my injection molding analysis. So to start the injection an molding analysis, it's as simple as this, where I just uh, get the part, I make the different configurations, I just get into the plastics manager here. Once I get into the plastics manager here, I can see the different uh, options available for me with the boundary conditions, what kind of mesh I'm going to make, or, uh, or I'm looking up to on the material and the process parameters, what uh, what I want to be there. It's, it's always like, hmm, res uh, results are always how I do the input, that's the output, that means, uh, uh, how accurate is my inputs are that accurate my simulations are now for example if i have to set the boundary conditions i just right click here and i say injection location and i can set where i want the injection location to be uh, it's, it's as simple as uh, you know selecting one particular area and giving the uh, giving the point which point i need to select for this case, I would select a point here. And I just give the, 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 the pointer diameter. And I say OK to this. So the injection location is set. OK, before that, I would like to remesh the model. Uh, and uh, once the meshing is done, I just right click on this. I just say create mesh. In the machine, I can set the parameters of machine, whether it can be automatic or it can be uniform, it can be curvature based. So a lot of options available here. I can have the coarse mesh. For this iteration, I would go with the coarse mesh. Uh, and I select the uniform machine. And in the advanced machine control, I can select the areas which are which I deem it to be critical areas where I need the machine to be very dense so that the accuracy of the results increase. So I can select any of these area and I can set the advanced meshing parameters. In this step, I'm just going with a surface mesh with a coarse surface mesh elements. And the estimate, I also I can see the estimated number of triangles formed, you know, using this kind of coarse uh, surface mesh. So it takes a couple of seconds to create the mesh. And once the meshing is done, I can set the other parameters, uh, the process parameters, the material, everything according to my requirement. And then I can just run the simulation in terms of uh, whether I can, I want to see only the flow analysis or I can see the flow and pack analysis as well. And uh, uh, if, uh, and also if, if I have to analyze the pooling, the setup of the pooling, how the channels are and all those things in uh, uh, in the mold, then cooling analysis and the, and also the wire page analysis, which the comp where the components are bigger, uh, there uh, you can you can go ahead with the uh, machine of uh, I mean you can go ahead with the wire page analysis. So now I just add the material. I, I, if if I just click on the material, I just open the database and I can see the material database a, a, a huge database available where I can have the default database where it gives me the sorting by family as well as by company. When I say family, it is the family of the polymer that is ABS or ABS plus PA or ABS plus PE, PC, PET, whatsoever. And if I scope by company, 
I can sort it by the company who will produce these kind of polymers or who will supply these kind of polymers uh, worldwide. For example, acai chemicals or beer, what, uh, whom, I just get in there and I can select their commercial name given to the material and I can, uh, I can select. And also I have something called as user defined database where if I don't have the material which I'm looking for in the default database, it is as easy as to create a user defined database. I can just, you know, uh, add the product and I can, uh, I can add the product here. I give the name and I can add uh, add the same to the library. And also I can uh, I can import the plastic material file with the materiality file if it is available from the supplier. I can just add it into the database so that it can be usable. And then uh, I also give the mold uh, material. I also have this mold data material database in terms of default as well as user defined. In this, you have all the metals where aluminum alloys and steel alloys and uh, copper alloys, other metals, titanium, zinc, all these materials are available, which I can choose according to my requirement. Whichever I need. And also, I can see the uh, chemical and physical properties of those materials in that window. Now, once th that is done, I just go with the fill settings. I just say fill settings. Here, I can see the fill time and mill temperature, mold temperature, injection pressure limit, everything can be set. It is, it is by default, it takes from the material what we have chosen and the boundary conditions. If at all, I'm not okay with this. I, I just want to experiment something else. I can just change this and I can say the fill settings are done. Okay, and then pack settings, pressure holding time and pure cooling time I can set. And then uh, also I can set the warp settings, what kind of uh, mold temperature, ambient temperature you're looking at and the gravity downward direction. We can set what kind of gravity direction we are looking at. And in the, in the options also I can set the solver type uh, hydration numbers and so on. So once all these settings are done, I just locate the injection uh, location and I just say run. So once I run, I can see the analysis in terms of, uh, you know, uh, this thing. And I, in terms of uh, uh, fill time as well as cool time, warp time and pack time. All these results will appear. Let us go back to the PowerPoint and we will come back to this later. Let us understand what kind of outputs we will get using the uh, SOLIDWORKS plastics. Once uh, the setup is done, we have seen till now the setup is uh, already set and I just need to need it to run the analysis. Once the analysis is run, what kind of analysis or what kind of detailed outputs I get. So these are the things we were talking about, filling and packing process. You can see the runner design, symmetric layouts, runner balancing, venting analysis, multi shots and co-injection where I have a simple part, a single part, but there are two different uh, materials used. For example, if I have to take an example, our toothbrushes, where uh, the handle would be of uh, a different material where I, we keep our cup and the body is of a different material. So in those kind of co-injections, how we can do and valve gates if we are hot runners where we have to have a staggered movement of uh, uh, in, uh, molten material inside the mold, mold cavity with the different valve gates where well, first valve will open for a few seconds and then the second valve will also open to compensate the flow and make the part fill easily. And the gas injection, gas assisted, how uh, it can be, and inserts, which we were talking about a little while, and the jetting analysis and bifurcation. engines. Bifurcation engines is where we have to see the uh, movement of the fiber inside a plastic part, where if it is, uh, it has to be transparent. Uh, the movement of uh, the material would not uh, take away the transparency, 100% uh, tra transparency to the less. So this is where these are the detailed outputs we'll get. Other than this, uh, we can see the filling analysis where you can see the flow animation with the type and elements, nodes, uh, material and product information, as well as the time say, taken to fill that particular part. You can see the graph in the left left hand side and you can see the animation here. Uh, and in the right hand top side corner, you can see the type of, type of the model and then the element and number of elements used to analyze this and the nodes and the material and as well as product, which product we are using, Sabit, 
this material product is semiconductor as two plastics. Now this is uh, this again show me the short shots. Uh, in the in the visualization, you can see it is not filling completely. Now we have uh, you know based on this, we will have to take the different uh, exp you know iterations where we change with the gate location or gate uh, thickness. I mean gate the diameter and see oh my and, and the pressure uh, settings. You can see that part is going to fit and the time also of course. And the weld lines, weld lines, uh, most of you know that weld lines forms in the plastic selection where the two flow fronts meet. Now, as the, there are, there is a flow in this direction and there are some, uh, you know, uh, circular features and uh, oblong features in this particular part. Definitely, there will be a flow diversification and these two flow fronts meet each other at different areas. So, once they, the flow fronts meet, it forms a line, which you can see that in black color, which is called as well lines, which we can uh, we can predict and we can avoid by changing the direction of the flow by changing the gate, so that it won't give me the uh, well lines there or minimize the well lines. And then ear traps, based on the parameters or, or the properties of material and uh, mold material used, we can see that there are there would be some air trap because of the flow of polymer where uh, we can see and we can uh, we can analyze where there is a possibility of creating uh, you know uh, air traps formed and we can plan the inserts in the mold to uh, as a vent where we can suck the air out uh, so that uh, the air traps are not formed and then multiple gates if the part is big are uh, uh, we have to use multiple gates to fill this i can see the contribution of each gates uh, how it is going to fill and uh, what is the time taken. Multi multiple cavity mold layouts where uh, I have multiple cavities and I have to balance the runner such that both the cavities or all the cavities fill at the, uh, in, in, in one shot in, in the time specified so that it avoids the short shot on, on uh, other uh, part. This comes to you know majorly on uh, family, I mean the runner balancing. And there is an example of here family mold where runner balance is not done. It is just given where uh, you may experience short shot on the part which is bigger than the other. The one of cavity area is larger. And in the balanced, you can see the filling is complete. And this is an example of volumetric shrinkage where it shows the percentage of shrinkage happening in areas which is color coded. And then sink marks. Sink marks appears where there is a um, there is a ununiform thickness of you know the, the ribs behind uh, you know uh, underneath the model. There are some ribs underneath this model, so exactly there and because of the thickness, the sink marks are formed. Now, now we can predict this and we can uh, solve this by you know, altering the dimensions of the uh, ribs or adding the adequate fillets and so on. So to, to summarize, these are some, uh, some functionalities we can see we, where we can predict and avoid injection molding manufacturing defects, eliminate costly mold river, improve part quality and decrease time to market. Now we will come back to the product and we will see how these kind of uh, how and what the results are shown. When I just get into the configuration of family mold layout, you can see here, and in the SolidWorks plastics, you can see uh, you know top casing final, which is appearing here, where uh, the analysis is already made and kept. Just give me uh, a couple of seconds where it is loading, and we can see what kind of results we can see here in this and how we interpret the results and how we take a detailed output of these results and it goes to uh, I, I just go to the plastics manager here and in the results i just double click on the flow results where i can see the results which are showing here and the only fill analysis have been done where uh, i can see this uh, fill time and I can see the animation of that as well. And what is the time taken to 
fill this all these four cavities which is a family mold not only this i can also see i just stop this and i can see the weld lines i just click on the weld lines and i can see the weld lines are found exactly where the flow fronts are meeting and it gives me the color indication as well as the degree of uh, weld lines in, in the trap and i can also just look have a look at ear traps where are the ear traps are formed yeah here we go there are few air traps here where uh, you know we can plan the vent in the mold you know against this so that the air is sucked and uh, the air traps are avoided And then uh, other results, I can see the pressure at the end of the fill, central temperature, average temperature, sink marks. See, where there are ribs and underneath, there the sink marks are. Now it is, now it is the, you know, design, change in the design where I have to, I have the adequate uh, fillets or strengthening or, uh, you know, playing with the thickness, altering the thickness of the ribs so that I avoid most of the sink marks here. So once all these results are done, how I interpret the results? I have something called as plastics advisor as well, which gives me the advice on uh, how uh, and how I interpret or what these results talk about this. Uh, so and also what I have is I can report. I can have the report summary and report created by just right clicking here and I say generate the report where uh, in, in the generation of the report, I can just uh, click on the OK in the summary, where I'll be you know, taken to a new window with uh, all the inputs required, where I can give, just give the cover, uh, cover title and the date, and the department, institute, author, introduction to what this project is, and the special notes if, if the analysis an analyst has to mention, and also generate the image files. What kind of image files I need to be generated? All GIFs or do you want AVIs? I can select all here for the GIFs. And also I can have the templates, different kind of templates. I need not to keep, uh, keep changing, I mean, creating the templates. I can create once and I can keep it and I can select the custom template that my, all my uh, company's uh, details like letters, address, whatsoever and the format everything and those can be those templates can be loaded here and i can select the custom template once all these things are given i say just okay so that it creates me the word file as well as uh, uh, presentation file which helps me to present the uh, report and also interpret the report according to my requirements so it takes a couple of seconds uh, to generate the report and it will give you a folder it will form a folder in your designated folder with all the details of images and the powerpoint presentation as well as the world world file so it is it is capturing all the data now and you can see the status bar in the in the icon where it is showing the time taken the generate report how how it is progressing and once the entire uh, Thing is captured it creates the file and give it to me also uh, this uh, what we are seeing is the flow results it is it shows the results based on the analysis what we have done while in the run if had if i chosen cooling it, it gives me the cool results as well and i can see there is a pop-up of the template already and it is creating the template it is creating the PowerPoint presentation with adding all the uh, all the required uh, uh, images and the reports and the results inside the PowerPoint presentation and forms the folder. And it asks me where to save that folder as well. And uh, other than this, uh, we have something called as Batch Manager, which helps me in creating within batches. I can set up the numerous studies in different tabs, and I can set Batch Manager to carry out the uh, analysis one after the other we can do so and i just save this in my, in my documents and I'm, I'm done with that now i can open and see the, the report i just get into my documents it 
report is here. I have the HTML report and the Word report and also a PPT and also the filling animation video. Let us go with the PPT and you can see the report template like this. And as I told you, this is not be the template which may need to be used. We can have our own templates and we need to choose a uh, template according to our requirement. Now it gives me the content in terms of introduction, information, summary, special note, figures, everything. With the title and the date, department, all those introduct introduction uh, notes. And then information of the model. And then uh, information of the material as well with the uh, characteristics of the material like melt temperature, mold temperature, ejection, transition, everything. And also the process conditions what we have said, cool information, work information, and the results. In the results, you can see the uh, tonnages, clamping force, required injection pressure, and so on, filling time, cooling time, mold open time, and all these things. You can also see the entire cycle time of this mold. It is around 27.9 and that is 28 seconds in this uh, scenario. Back results, anyways, we have not done so. It won't show any, it is not showing anything here. We have done only flow here. I can give the special notes and also it gives me the viscosity graph, the material parameters, specific volume graph, everything. This is to uh, understand about what material we are using, which helps me in uh, uh, these are some uh, some graphs which help me in analyzing the clamping force and the animations, filling animations. How it is spelling, pin time, pressure, central temperature, all these results are captured and it has been given as a report. So, so you can you can uh, have the template already defined or you can uh, you can alter the template later as well and you can uh, interpret the result or you can present the results to the stakeholders. So that's how uh, easy is to do this simulation in SOLIDWORKS plastics. Let's get back to the summary where you can, uh, it, it gives me the benefits of predicting and avoiding injection molding defects at the, right at the early stage of the design. So that costly rework of the mold later in the later stages is eliminated. And then also it, it helps us to improve the part quality and uh, by reducing the iterations, number of iterations to prove the mold in, in, the, in the, for the production, it decreases the time to market. So let's let's get into this ex experimental validation study where uh, this experimental validation was done for a medical cap. Uh, this was by done by Professor Stephen Johnson, and uh, he works in a renowned plastics engineering department, Harvard. So. Uh, so here, the pressure taken from the machine display, not instrumented tool cavity sensors. The material used is uh, polypropylene and thin gate and uh, beryllium copper in, uh, insert. And this was a study for short shot series. You can see the short shots happening and the iterations done in the SOLIDWORKS plastics to eliminate it. And the, what you see in this, uh, in the uh, uh, top, is the iterations done on the prototypes, and these are the iterations done in SOLIDWORKS sort of plastics. So this, the, the top one takes a lot of time, but the uh, but the iterations done in SOLIDWORKS sort of plastics is probably minutes. So which helps me in saving of time and arriving to the better results in the initial level itself. And these are some customer references. Indian customers, we have uh, Rajamani, Eosmith, Scandray, Elcom, Archer, Cafe, and so on. These, these are a very small set of uh, customers we have displayed here. So few of our customers, and um, they're all uh, using SOLIDWORKS plastics in and out for their plastics parts analysis. And also coming into the uh, other solutions, what we have in terms of simulation, we have uh, finite element analysis, where SOLIDWORKS simulation, which comes with the packages like simulation standard, professional, and premium, which in the standard, we can do the static, uh, linear static analysis with print trackers, 
fatigue analysis, motion analysis, hotspot detection, and simulation displays. In the simulation professional, we have uh, DOE optimization and then uh, topology optimization, frequency, buckling, event based motion, thermal analysis, pressure vessel, test, and so on. And premium comes also, also uh, comes with uh, non-linear. Th these are all uh, cascaded. Where uh, if I if I use simulation premium, simulation professional, and standard features are already inbuilt. And if I use simulation premium, simulation standard capabilities are already built in. So uh, simulation premium is the topmost, which comes with uh, non-linear analysis as well as composites analysis, time history, random migration, shock response, and so on. And uh, in the flow simulation, that is the next uh, distinct computational fluid dynamics. In that, we have flow simulation, which is for internal, external, laminar, and turbulent heat transfer, non Newtonian fluids, EKRX interchange, acoustic power levels, and so on. And then uh, there are sub modules inside flow simulation, which helps me in uh, analyzing the electronic cooling in terms of child heating, V pipes, ECT generators, extended database with uh, two R components. And uh, another sub uh, sub uh, module is HVAC, which helps me in analyzing the heat ventilation and heat conditioning, get advanced radiation and tracer studies and other parameters. When it comes to plastics injection molding, again, what we have seen, there are three uh, flavors, which is termed as uh, plastics standard, professional, and premium. Standard comes with the capabilities which is adequate for a plastics designer who is not designing the mold, but he wants to ensure that this the part he is designing plastics parts he is designing is uh, manufacturable in terms of uh, machining and seeing the, the filling and short shots well lines in miles and so on which is which gives me the fill analysis complete fill analysis and the plastic professional which will, will come with additional functionalities like gas assisted injection moldings multiple cavities runner balancing and so on uh, which is uh, an adequate tool for well, part designer as well as the mold designer where uh, we have to see the filling and packing as well and the plastics premium is the ultimate version of uh, solidworks plastics which comes with all the functionalities including advanced cooling warpaging uh, warp warping analysis and geometry export and also the mold inserts so these these are the packages of uh, solidworks simulation portfolio which helps me in analyzing the uh parts so uh, this this was about uh, solidworks uh, plastics so hope this uh, session was useful thank you very much for attending uh, and uh, again uh, um, urging you to be safe and take care uh, have a nice day ahead and have a nice weekend thank you very much